Mass media now plays a major and critical role in modern society. It serves as a convenient and important platform for people to gain knowledge and share information with the world. However, this convenience also has its disadvantages as people grew to heavily rely on media to gain new knowledge and information, so much to an extent where it shapes their mentalities and perceptions. With that being said, a huge social issue within the last few years has been racism and misrepresentation of certain races and the way it is promoted and delivered to us through the media. Regrettably, the media doesn't always represent people accurately, specifically black males who are wrongfully being portrayed as dangerous, violent, aggressive, and uneducated in numerous spheres of the media. The bad representation of black men is a much known problem which escalated over the last decade as multiple African Americans became victims of police brutality. As an example of that was the case of Michael Brown, a black teenager who got shot dead by a white police officer, Darren Wilson, on August 9th, 2014 in Ferguson, St. Louis. An innocent teenager was accused of stealing cigarillos from a convenience store when Wilson got a call and arrived at the crime scene. After meeting Brown and exchanging a few words, Wilson proceeded to grab him by his neck from inside his police vehicle and a few seconds later shooting Michael dead, firing eight bullets including two in a head. Over the last week, dozens of shootings once again claimed the lives of too many innocent people all across the U.S. As seems to be a regular occurrence in urban America, deadly shootings fill a constant news stream in places like Chicago, New Orleans, and other major U.S. cities. But there was one story in particular that garnered more anger and outrage than usual the death of 18-year-old Michael Brown of St. Louis, Missouri. See, according to eyewitness accounts, Brown was walking down the street with a friend when an officer in a patrol car approached the two teens. Shots broke out following a verbal, verbal confrontation, and moments later, Michael Brown lay dead, unarmed, in the middle of the street. A witness to the event recalled that, quote, they shot him, and he fell. He put his arms up to let them know he was compliant and that he was unarmed, and they shot him twice more, and he fell to the ground and died. This photograph, showing Brown's lifeless body lying face down in a pool of blood, has since gone viral. Not only because officers didn't even bother to cover the teen with a sheet, but left him in the middle of the road for as many as four hours in plain sight of neighbors and onlookers. Media provides the definitions about who we are as a nation and reinforces our values and norms. It gives us concrete examples of what happens to those who transgress these norms. And most importantly, perpetuates certain ways of seeing the world and people within that world. It tells us how society sees us and at the same time tells us how to behave in society. And often, those messages that are being delivered to the people are not truthful and biased. In the case of Michael Brown, the police officers seem to have a predetermined view and opinion on people like him, African American males. He claimed to be threatened by an 18-year-old unarmed boy with no arrest record, which again proves the fact that policemen are just like regular citizens who get influenced by the information they gather from the people in the media, and that carries over to their everyday lives, including their time and duty. I believe that social media directs a lot of attention towards crime cases between white and black citizens, frequently misrepresenting the minorities. As the idea of racism and hatred towards the African-American population gets exposed to the public over and over again, it gets stuck in people's heads and it reconstructs their views and beliefs. In Brown's case, he was described as unarmed by multiple news sources. And in my opinion, that kind of clarification was only needed and used simply due to the fact that the victim was black. Guys, this case reflects a very real problem in America when it comes to race issues. The fact that in 2014, police will instantly associate blackness with criminality. And much of the media is doing nothing more than perpetuating that same ridiculous stereotype. Check this out. After the shooting, news outlets were airing photographs of Brown wearing his high school cap and gown, remarking that he was only days away from uh, starting his first semester in college. But by the time more outlets picked up the story, this photo was circulating around, showing Brown in a sports jersey and suggesting that the boy might have been a gangbanger. Unsurprisingly, in response to this blatant race baiting that the news media uses to drive their narrative, the Twitter community came up with the hashtag, if they gunned me down, posting pictures of themselves on social media and asking which picture the news media would likely use if they were gunned down by police. In this tweet, Ben Valence asked if the media would portray her as a gangbanger 
or a classy lady. And here, a user posts a photo of himself in a U.S. Army uniform alongside a selfie of him holding a toy gun, asking if the media would use the pic on the left or the one on the right if he were gunned down. The point these hashtag activists are making is that the court of public opinion is driven by how the media chooses to frame the story. Now, every week on this show, we highlight instances of how minorities are disproportionately impacted by, by police violence in America, and as well as the stereotypes that end up spinning their stories away from the truth. Whether it be Trayvon Martin wearing a hoodie or Michael Brown dropping a peace sign, this is racial profiling at its worst. And when it comes to police violence, we should be disgusted at the pace with which these crimes are committed. According to the Malcolm X grassroots movement, an African-American person is killed by police, security guards, or armed vigilantes every 28 hours in America. Keep in mind that these are often police officers killing members of the very communities they're sworn to protect. But look, at the end of the day, you can blame police tactics that rely on racial profiling, or you can blame the media, but until we take action ourselves, this will continue to be the norm. It's time we step it up. If you see an injustice, film it, report it. Don't wait for accountability, demand it. Because at the end of the day, they can't ignore us all. Also, Officer Wilson, who was involved in a shooting, said he was scared for his life. and described the feeling of grabbing Brown as a five-year-old holding onto Hulk Hogan. And this is only one of thousands of cases where black males are being treated as second-class citizens and dangerous suspects due to the false image drawn by the mass media and the negativity it sparks within the society. However, police brutality is not the only area which was influenced by the misrepresentation of black males through the media. In 2011 study, media representations and impact on lives of black men and boys conducted by the Opportunity Agenda, negative mass media portrayals were strongly linked with lower life expectations among black men. They not only help create barriers to advancement within our society, but also make these positions seem natural and inevitable. Therefore, I believe in white supremacy. To take Tiger on, well, yeah, maybe they should just gang up for a while <laughs> until... Lynch him what, in the back yeah, alley. Yeah, that's right. Then. <laughs> oh, some rough girls from Rutgers, man. They got tattoos and some hardcore hoes. That's, that's a nappy-headed hose there. I'm going to take that down. Not a black male, not a Chinese male with his eyes like this. But Hispanics can't carry the whole load. The rest of you get busy. Make babies. Well, Ed, is it one of these matters where the, the Kenyans and Ethiopians, they see, uh, let's, 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 let's be honest here, see a white guy out front and they don't take him seriously? But it's Phnom Penh. No. What is New Delhi? New Delhi. Yeah, it hurts to miss that one. Interested in trading with Al Qaeda. All they want to trade is burkas. I don't want to travel with them. They like one way tickets. China is like, Ching Chong, Kuda, Ching Chong, Ching Chong, Danny DeVito, Ching Chong, 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 Gronk, The View, Ching Chong. Kind of stunned a second. Well, 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 then get away from the door, nigga. As a result of Michael Brown's death and other infamous cases, multiple protests and riots broke out countrywide within African American communities demanding justice and equal treatment of all citizens. A worldwide known movement, Black Lives Matter, brought a lot of attention to the issue as well, and all these efforts combined together resulted in minor changes which can have a major impact in the long run. Darren Wilson was forced to resign from the force, the Justice Department made necessary changes in Ferguson police force and court system, and finally, a better selective process is now being enforced among all police departments around the country.